DP director relationship is very organic. And so for me, in a way, I had to kind of like come in with a clean slate and be like, okay, how does he work? Not how I work. The more I started just kind of like seeing his style and seeing his visual language, then I was like, oh, okay, that's what he likes. You're listening to Talk Doc to Me, a podcast and community dedicated to candid conversations around documentary storytelling. I'm your host and fellow filmmaker, Leah DeLeon, and today's guest is Luis Lopez. Born and raised in San Diego, Luis Lopez is a Mexican-American director of photography for documentaries, narrative films, and commercials. His most recent work, Dear Philadelphia, was an official selection for Sundance Film Festival 2021 and won the 2021 Vimeo Staff Pick Award at Black Star Film Festival. His artistic approach to cinematography is intimate and emotional, capturing the raw essence of each character poetically. Through his craft, he aims to give voice to the voiceless and tell coming-of-age stories from underrepresented communities. We also have my husband and business partner Matt on to join us, so the three of us discuss the role of a cinematographer, how to build trust between crew members, and how to know which projects to really commit yourself to. Luis is our homeboy, and we've worked on a lot of projects together, so we hope you enjoy. Let's get right into it. Thank you, Luis and Matthew, for being here. Wow. Let's do this. When did you get into filmmaking? What was the first little- What was the spark? Yeah. Yeah, the spark. It's actually interesting because like my my older brother, he's the one that kind of initiated a lot of filmmaking things in, into the family. Like my dad's side is very art- artistic, but I think seeing him, it brought some type of like interest in a way where I was like, okay, like why is he so passionate about this? Actually, initially, I remember I was questioning, do I even want to do this? Like filming, I don't know. And How was, old were you when, when this yeah, was happening? Yeah, when this, when this was happening, it was like around like 15 years old. Um, I started just dabbling with like photos and stuff like that. And your brother's how many years older? Uh, he's five years older. <laughs> so like even like during high school, he was just really on it. I was just questioning it because I was like, okay, do I really like it? Or was it just because of him? <laughs> or or it, I don't know. I just, I just knew that the emotions I was getting whenever I watched the movie always piqued my interest. Um, but then I remember going to college, I was like, nah, I'm not going to do it. I was like, freak that, dude. I'm just going to like, just something else. And what then college like, did you go to? I went to San Diego State. Um, so I was actually physical therapy at first. My parents, my mom was like, hey, do the medical field. You know, that's really stable, really, you know, and I was like, all right, whatever. I wasn't as passionate going to college, but I just knew it was just part of like the family traditions. Go to college, do this and that. Okay, so you're doing physical therapy. Were you like into it at that point you were like i'm gonna be a physical therapist at first i was i was just because i was also really into brazilian jiu-jitsu really working out um so i was like yeah, this kind of seemed very related but then once i started studying i was like wow this is trash <laughs> <laughs> what about it was trash no i think it was just more of like I, no I, i'm not saying physical therapy is trash <laughs> just the, nah, dude, but, it's but trash. for you for you but for me it's just like that's just not how my mind thinks it's, you know i'm yeah. very just like I always connected with anything theoretical or mm-hmm. just very kind of like outside of the box instead of very like scientific box squared, very, you know, strategic and stuff like that. So it just, I just, it just didn't connect with my mind, but I just remember it was like towards so- end of sophomore year of college. And then there's a specific movie I watched and I remember there's a scene, it was actually with Shia LaBeouf, but there was like this emotional scene that I remember I was like, wow, I literally just felt connection. I was like, I feel his pain. I feel just that moment with him. And I, I don't know, something about that just turned something on. Cause I was always, I always loved film, but I think in that moment, I was like, it, it felt human. It, was, it didn't feel like it was, it didn't feel like it was just like, okay, that's just a movie, cool, good experience. It was just like, wow, like I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing this moment with him, with me and him or in just that story. It moved you. It just moved me. It was just like, wow, like that was very interesting. And then I feel like after that, there was like a momentum where I was like, hmm, why is that making me feel this emotion? Because, you know, I'm Mexican, so I feel like I'm naturally very passionate. Um, you are. So <laughs> very passionate. <laughs> so I think, so then that started just making me think. And then... Um, then I, I even thought, should I be an actor? Because I, I like what what happened. I was like, oh, then I asked, started asking my brother. I was like, hey, like, I think I want to start acting. And he was like, hey, read these books. And I started reading. I was like, nah. <laughs> I was like, no, nah, I'm okay. I'm, I don't, I don't want to be in front of the camera like that. But I just knew I, 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 knew I wanted to be part of the process. Um, and for me, I just, 
I think for me, I always connected visually with things because like I'm just a visual, visual person. I, I, in a sense, like to read, but there's pictures in it. I'm like, dude, what's that? Right, right. <laughs> you know, I read it. You're a visual learner. I'm, I'm just a visual learner. Um, not everybody's like reading comprehension is like, that's not the way everyone learns. Yeah. So no, it's exactly. I'm not, I'm not, I don't learn that way either. Yeah. No, I like to read. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So then you decide that that movie really moved you. You're like, wow, interesting. Maybe I'll be an actor. Actually, no. Yeah. I'm a visual person. Cinematography? So long story short, that happened during the sophomore year that I'm still going through physical therapy. And literally, it's like the last semester of junior year. I'm just like, I'm sick of this. Like, I can't study physical therapy. And then I was, I really just, I started studying film more than I was studying my classes. And I was just, I was just, I, I, I had, I did had. I didn't want anything to do with like physical therapy because I was just like, I was like, it just felt like I was wasting my time. But I was so passionate with like learning film. I remember walking through the film school. I was like, whoa, like, I want to be here. Like, and I saw myself like, oh yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to do something here. What happened was like, there's a lot of support to my friends. My parents were for sure not with it. There's like, dude, you're junior year. You're about to go to senior year, like just finish. And I was like, I, everything in me just didn't want to. I was just like, no, like I can't, I can't. And for me, like with my faith uh, as Christian, it's like, I feel like God was just kept pushing me. Like, I, I feel like I wanted to say no to film because it was the easiest path. Well, I was like, okay, I, let me just get a safe job, whatever, whatever. But it's just like, everything kept tugging me. And I was like, no, no, like, I don't want to do that. Like, I got to start over. I don't want to be in school. I hated school. And it's just, then I, but just everything, like doors started opening. I started meeting people that like encouraged me. And then I just, I felt like I had such a support to do it. And then um, that it just made no sense for me not to. And then so I remember I had to talk to my mom. It was How like, did that go? It was a lot of conversations. So first conversation, it was like, nah. But then I kept kind of like pushing it. And then I remember this like the last time it was crazy. It was during summer. And then I had to like to switch majors. I had only had one week left. And then literally I was like, mom, like, I just can't do physical therapy anymore. Um, and then she remember where she looks at me. She's like, you want to do film, right? I was like, yeah. She's like, she stayed quiet. And then she was like, all right, do it. And I was like, I was like, whoa, that was just so crazy. Cause it's, they were so adamant of like, no, you have to finish, you have to finish. So I was like, I thought it was impossible. So lady switched majors. Then I had to figure out how to, to apply, get into that first try. And then I just remember when I was in film school, like I was just like, I, want my, I just want my hands on the camera. I just knew, I was like, can I film it? You know what I mean? Did you, were, before when you were like studying film, was it just like watching a bunch of videos or like, did you, how did you educate yourself on it? Or did you have a camera before? Um, I, had a, I had a Canon T3i. <laughs> hey, Rebel. throwback. Canon Rebel <laughs> T3i. And honestly, like, I was just taking pictures, honestly. I wasn't really doing much video wise. Um, I did some stuff here and there. I did a free wedding. I did this thing during high school that was kind of like the film, but not really, not really. I mean, it kind of also during that time, I was also working at autos. So they, let, they had me like take some pictures. I was, I was honestly doing only pictures. And for people who are not aware, Autos is the uh, jiu-jitsu academy yeah. in San Diego that Andre Galvao runs. Andre Galvao is like the LeBron James of jujitsu, if you will. Yeah. Except I would look at him more, even more of a pioneer. So even more like a Michael Jordan, because it, he's a pioneer of like monetizing jujitsu as a career, and then also being extremely successful at the the nth degree, more championships in the most prestigious tournaments in the world than anyone else, basically. And we so, are making a feature documentary about him. Right. So we're making. Matt is directing it. I'm mm -hmm. producing it, and Luis is the DP. Well said. Okay, so how'd you get into jujitsu? Yeah. Okay, so going into jujitsu, uh, um, you know. Yeah, what was the moment that you were like exposed to it? We were moving from our house into a new house, but we had a, there was like a, there was like a time period where we didn't have anywhere to live. So we lived at my aunt's uh, apartment, one bedroom apartment for five people <laughs> and two dogs. So that was kind of trippy. But I remember that season, you know, it was, um, 
it was a it was a rough season for the family. Um, a lot of stuff going on. Um, and I feel like for me in that season, I just wanted an escape. Uh, so, you know, I feel like I had overheard from my dad. And he, he was saying that like, oh, like my friend does jujitsu at this academy. And I was like, you know, what? I, just, I just want to try that. You know, I just want to try something different. I played soccer before, but I, did, I sucked. I was always defense. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I did that. And I just remember I was just like, I just remember the first day of training jiu-jitsu, I was just like, wow, like, what is this? Like, this is like, it's beautiful. You know what I mean? It's something about it. Like, I love the competitiveness, but I just love how like someone who's 120 pounds could beat me up. And I'm like, you know, 180 or something like that at that time. And I was just like, I don't know, there's something about it just felt natural. Everything was clicking. Everything was like moving. I was just like, what the? This was like 15 and a half years old. And then I remember just during high school, I would, I would, uh, do school, go to my grandma's house, eat some food, go to go train circuit training, then right after class. So that was like five to six, six to seven thirty was jujitsu, and then I'll do a eight to nine thirty at Muay Thai. So I was like every day just boom boom because I was just so I was so in love. I you were into like, it, yeah. So into it. Every day I was just training, 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 and then during summer I'll just live there pretty much. It's like a relationship. You feel the ups and the downs and all that stuff, and so many times I wanted to quit. But it's just one of those things where it's like, I just, you know, it, it's it's something that's taught me in so many aspects of how to just live life, um, how to persevere, like in jiu-jitsu when you're getting smashed by a huge guy, it's like, do you just give up and let him choke you or do you fight to the end? And I think that translated in so many ways. Okay, so now we got your background about how you got started into, into jiu-jitsu. And then you started taking photos for Autos. Yeah, then I started taking photos and you, Autos. Do you remember the day you met Andre? So I actually, like, I was still at the old gym, and I remember I went to a seminar in Long Beach. And then, you know, I was always, I already, like, you know, I already saw videos of him on YouTube, and then kind of like, well, like who's this guy? I saw that one famous video he's known for. It's like old school video where he's, like, dancing around this guy. Kind of, and I was just like, yo, this guy is crazy. And I remember I met him at that seminar, and I was like, I, just, I was just like, I just knew when I saw him, and then I met him, I was like, oh, I want to train with you. And I remember that just started like uh yeah that was like a seed that started growing and i remember like the gym that was at you know it started getting you know it just pretty much ended up closing but i remember i was i was like i just want to train there like i know i want to train there because i at that point i wanted to compete more but i just remember yeah when i met him i was just like he's a an, at first intimidating person he's just jacked <laughs> you know he's jacked and beefcake he's, man he's, he's beefcake you know cauliflower you know he's like oh shoot but he's just like the most amazing person ever. And um He's silly. Yeah, he's silly. It's just like and that's why they say don't judge a book by his cover. You know, if you judged him by his cover, you'd be like, Oh, I'm never gonna talk to him. But you meet him, you talk to him, and it's like he's just the most kindest person ever. Um but yeah, I just remember like I was driving, I saw the gym, I was like, That's it, all right, let's go. And then I realized it got destroyed. <laughs> I was like, just got destroyed by everyone and it humbled me, but that's what I mean. Like, jujitsu, like it teaches you. It, it humbles you always. Like, the higher your belt gets, the more you realize you don't know much. <laughs> you know, which is interesting because I felt like when I was like blue belt, and that I was like, damn, I'm killing it. But then now that I, now what that belt I'm, are you now? I'm a brown belt. Uh, but I think like right now I'm just like, man, I just feel like it's like there's a whole ocean. I've only touch like a drop of like what I, what I can learn and grow in. Um, but I think, you know, you learn that based off who's leading you, right? So I think, you know, for me, I think the environment, Andre, like just how humble they are of just wanting to learn from other people. It allows me and my journey in jiu-jitsu to be like, okay, cool. Like, you know, I got a lot to learn, but that's the part of the process. You know, that's how, that's how you grow as a human. That's how you grow as in the art. And that's what's everything. It's like, you have to be humble. You have to ask people for help. You got to ask people who know more for you to be like, hey, how can I improve, you know, and kind of be like, kill that. And just pretty much do an ego death in a way of like, you know what, like, I don't know everything, but that's okay. Cause like, as humans, we're very communal and we want to help each other. We don't want to like just burn people and be like, no, you die. You know, you're like, you whatever, I'm just going to kill you. It's like, it's, it's, it's <laughs> I mean, everything you're saying though is like, like how you're also can be great along the way. Yeah. You know, cause like 
it's on right the the idea is that there it's like a never ending learning process oh 100 percent. right but yeah if you if you ask Says for the help white belt. Well, I mean, no, but I, I think, yeah, I wasn't a saying white that belt, in a bad but, way. Right, I, was, right. I wasn't saying yeah, that in a bad know, way. I'm, I'm saying, gladly a white belt. I'm saying yeah. you're, I mean, the reason why you started jujitsu was because of our project. So I'm saying, right. like, it's it's cool to see, like, you guys able to, you guys rolled earlier today. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's cool. It was broke my turkey. It's true. It's true. He was in like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, say you're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you're doing jujitsu. You switch your major. Your mom says yes, you can do this. Then you get your hands on a camera, and then and then you're into cinematography. I just felt home. I felt home. I was just like, wow, like this is it. And then the first project of film school is like you had to do like a documentary or something like that. And I did a documentary about my dad, who's a police officer. And then I was, you know, I was just able just to just flow and really be like, oh wow, this is really cool. I want to do this and just enjoy the mistakes, enjoy like how to do it all. But yeah, I felt home on the, using the camera. I was like, wow, like I just love when you find that image, I'm like, wow, like that looks really good. And then as I got older, I was like, wow, like, okay, like it looks good, but now let's seek the purpose behind the image, right? Let's not just like get a good looking, cool yeah, cool shot. And I was just like, okay, why is that a shot? Does it have to look like that? Is that the right lens? So I think during film school is just my my process, my journey of just discovering like, okay, like why do I love cinematography? Doing as many projects as I can. And there weren't that many DPs in film school. So there's only like two. Um, so you got to DP so everything. We got to DP everything, you know? And then- uh, That's sick though. That's yeah, super sick, you know? Good hands-on experience. Good hands-on. First time I was able to uh, work with an Alexa, work with like, all these different cameras and all this like oh hey like it's just cool to see that every camera has a different personality and how they uh display an image and so it's like i think that's the cool part too because it's like it's like man it's literally cameras are just tools but it's like there's certain tools that like you connect with more so maybe maybe that's why certain people are so brand loyal because i know canon's it <laughs> sony's it you know it's like piece of for them they connect it in a way where it's like that's my image so why do you connect with the red Komodo? <laughs> well, okay. Okay, tell. tell. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's like, I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's like, no, actually. No, I, I mean, I'm blessed. Because, like, for, <laughs> for me growing up, I was I was always, like, man, red. Like, that was, like, a dream camera. I, yeah, I just love, I love the image that kind of comes out. But for me, it's, like, I think my home would forever be, like, Alexa. Ari Alexa. You know, Ari Alexa mm -hmm. Mini. Uh, just because it's, like, you know, everyone's, I feel like now these days, everyone's trying to match film. Because film it has a more, it's more human in a way where there's imperfections that make it. There's physical textures. There's physical textures right? is how it, how, it, uh, how it reacts to highlights and other things and like skin tone, like all that stuff is just something of, about it just feels human in a way. And so like when there's a sensor or something that's just too clean, you know, there's something, you don't see that there's wrong, but you're like, okay, like there's no personality to it. It's almost yeah. too good. It's, it's too good, almost too good. And for me, my favorite cinematographer, his name is Bradford Young. You know, he's such an interesting cinematographer because I think how he goes about cinematography was so different from everyone else I heard him speak about it. Because he came from a very like philosophical, yeah. Like emotional. Anecdotal perspective of like emotional, where it's just like, you know, for him, he was like, every time I read a script, how I choose the script is, is if I can see myself in that story. And I was like, wow, like usually, before I heard him, usually someone would say, oh yeah, it just looks like it has potential where I can do a lot or, I don't know, it's very technical terms, but he was very like, you know, I didn't see me in it. Cause like, that's how you can fully get like images that can come out of you and you be, you partake into the, the process of art making and stuff like that. Um, and just like so many other ways, he has so many convictions of like how he tells stories, who he tells stories about um, and how he chooses glass, right? So lenses, it's like, he's very just like organic with it where it's just like, okay, this story requires this type of lenses because how it flares or how it um, transmits, you know, the skin or whatever it is, it's like that fits that story, this, you know, but it's just like very just like philosophical. So it made me think about like, okay, you know, why is that story really important for me? Okay, so you figure out that you love cinematography and then you get the opportunity to DP 
Dear Philadelphia. That ended up going to Sundance. Tell me about that. There was a room in film school. Uh, I had a friend. She saw that I did some work. She was like, hey, I've been visiting Philadelphia for a couple of years, and I've grown to connect with certain people there, and I want to tell this story. She was like, I'm planning on filming there for a whole month. I want to see if you're down, right? I think her passion, her vision for it really stood out to me. So I was like, you know what, let's just do it. I mean, I've never been in one location and filmed for a whole month. So I was like, oh, dang, like, do I want to do this? This is a big commitment. Long story short, we're there for a whole month filming these communities in Philadelphia, this uh, program that helps inner city kids. That's part of the, like, the, the church out there. And this was like your first film ever. Yeah, like, doc, doc. That was life changing. Cause in a way it was like, I just realized that like, man, like these are human beings. One guy, he raised his hand and he got up and uh, he started singing the song. It's pretty much the, the topic of the song was like, things are gonna change. Uh, it's an old school song, I forgot it. But man, when, it, like, when I was filming him singing that, I felt everything, all his pain, all his struggles, all his like, you know, falling back to drugs, going in like, I was just captured in that one moment. I was like, wow, like, this is bigger than just like filming a doc for other people to see. I mean, of course, which is exposure, but you know, just to have the privilege and honor to like be able to tell those stories. And then the intention behind it was just to tell these stories. Like she was like, I might submit it to a couple of uh, film festivals. And then it gets into Sundance. This is funny. You just glaze over it and you're like, yeah, and then it got into Sundance, whatever. But like, dude, the message. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, bro, I got into Sundance. That's crazy. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. But yeah, it, I think it's just more of like, I don't know. I just feel like I was like, okay, that's cool. I just didn't want the focus to be on me. Because like, at the end of the day, the reason why it's good is because these people's stories. So it was like, I didn't like the attention. And I was like, I mean, I posted it because of support. But I guess I started just really realizing, okay, like, What's my heart in film? Is it to get awards or is it the craft of it, right? For the people. For the people. Whenever I feel really passionate about a story, the images come. It's just like, I don't even have to think. They flow out of you. They flow. And that's why I know I'm in my element where I'm like, oh, okay, like I'm, I'm in the right space. Mm. I know when I'm in the wrong space is whenever it's just like, it just feels transactional. Where like, I'm hiring you as a contractor. I'm hiring you as just like an entity. You create the product and give it to me. And I'm like, it's, of course you gotta pay bills and you gotta make things happen. But whenever you find the crew, the people that feel organic and that feel like everyone's able to express in their own way in some way, of course, like directors, you know, they have the final say, but to have that space to collaborate and then, and really everyone fighting for the same, uh, same thing is for the story, then that's when, you know, you know, you're in a good space. Beautiful. I feel like this is a beautiful, beautiful moment segue. to transition, <laughs> yeah, into, because I feel like I've experienced like both sides of those things yeah. with you because we've done, obviously, you know, the Andre Gavao documentary, but then we've also done a few different like corporate gigs where yeah. we did like that uh, one brand at, you know, some like Airbnb or something yeah, or yeah, whatever yeah. it was. And Luis is our go to cinematographer. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, nope. Luis. Like, I feel like when we moved here to San Diego in 2020, oh, yeah. we were, we didn't know what the San Diego community was like. We were maybe a little bit nervous about, you know, coming from LA, that's kind of where the hot spot of yeah. filmmaking is. And we're like, oh, we gotta kind of find the cool San Diego peeps. Like where the, yeah. where the San Diego peeps at? And uh, I think how we found you was through Instagram. No, so. No? Okay, you tell I think it. I think so through Instagram, but I get uh, a little bit of context. I started making a documentary about um, Jordan Rabe, my you know guy who officiated Leigh and I's wedding, and a really good friend. And I filmed him at Autos once because he moved to San Diego and he started training there. And so we were like, oh yeah, yeah don't film like the technique, you know, because people pay good money for that. Like we don't want to be disrespectful. I'm like, for sure. So then I filmed Jordan warming up, and then you know Andre's about to start teaching technique. So then I I put the camera down by my side and I sit down, and then Andre like stares at me from across the room. He's like you want to film? And I was like, me? And he's like, yeah. I was like, okay. So then Jordan and I kind of give each other this weird look, like what's happening? I'm like, I don't know, but I'm gonna roll with it. <laughs> so I filmed that day. Cause I guess, you know, I know this now, but uh, training there, but they always have somebody filming the technique so that they can put it on their website and then have people watch like Autos BJJ on demand, which is their online platform for learning jujitsu. 
but so I filmed it that day because I guess nobody was there to film it. And then I shared the footage that day, like super quick with him. And then he never even responded actually. <laughs> but the way that he like interacted with me, I was also like, this guy's super interesting. Like Jordan's talked about him about this, about this crazy champion. You know, at the time he had won five ADCC championships and uh, he was just like, he talked about him like he was the God of jujitsu, you know? And I was like, this dude's so silly though. And like very nice and thoughtful. So then I was paying attention when we moved to San Diego about like who was interacting. Cause I was like immediately like this guy would be a really interesting documentary, but I don't know him well enough to like mm -hmm. make that happen. Yeah. And so I was just kind of paying attention about like when maybe that opportunity might be. And then we started working with Electrum Performance mm -hmm. um, who like trains a lot of uh, strength and conditioning for jujitsu athletes. And so I was like starting to tell more athlete stories. athlete stories about jujitsu athletes. Right. So I'm like, okay, now I'm getting closer. We knew nothing about jujitsu before. And then I was like, I think I saw you on Instagram because someone reposted something or maybe you made something about Andy Murasaki yeah, or something. Yeah. I was like, who's this guy making these cinematic videos about jujitsu athletes like really close to Andre's life? Yeah. And then I was like, you know what? I could look at this like this guy is my competition or I could look at it like let's become a team yeah. and so i was like i was like dude he's so beautiful cinematography i feel like he's like dedicated to being a cinematographer and we could be a really good match because that's more dedicated than i am to cinematography as like i think of myself that way but i think i've really transformed into a director and an editor and so it's it's great to have somebody that's going to be dedicated to cinematography i was like let's meet up and so i think i messaged you on instagram yeah said yeah, like yeah. let's get coffee or something yeah you were like Dude, I appreciate you putting fire emojis all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what it was, bro. No, you were interacting with me. I was interacting with you. You were sending oh, me fire dang. emojis. All the time I was a fire, fire. I was like, I was like, this guy's On got stories, a vibe. Or like, you know stories, what? Stories. This, oh, okay. is, this is a really good example of creating a great culture. Like, I, you just gave off a good vibe. Yeah, you were just, just like responding to random stuff and I had never met you. And I was like, mm. why is this guy being so positive? Like, <laughs> as a positive person, I was like, it's almost off-putting how positive you're so being. So why do you keep just <laughs> enjoying the things I create? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, whoa, bro. Like, why do you like my stuff? Like, <laughs> <laughs> So then we met up and got coffee at Communal Coffee, yeah. all three of us. And then, and then we just like, Luis we got had to know mad you. flow. Yeah, and yeah. then we realized, I'm like, dude, this guy's a sweetheart. <laughs> yeah yeah we just like hit it off i fall we're like dang okay like we have a dp that we can go to for san diego stuff and then and then it ca the announcement came out that andre was gonna fight uh, well first first okay the slap happened okay so first gordon ryan who's andre's like rival basically and like gordon ryan's you know the pound for pound essentially the best no-gi grappler of all time today right and so he there was like this interaction where he slapped Andre in the face backstage after one of the, after their students fought each other at a tournament. And then we heard about that news and I was like, oh my God, that's crazy. It's like literally it was nicknamed the, the slap heard around the world, right? Like super nuts. And then shortly after he announced that he was going to do the super fight with him at ADCC, which everyone was kind of assuming in the first place, I think, because Andre was defending his title anyways. Mm -hmm. And so it was like meant for them to fight already yeah and so it was just like a thumbs up all right let's do it kind of a thing it was know? actually interesting too because like the adc's before that he was like i'm retired right and then it's but then gonna, gordon well, you and filmed him took with a picture him as well you, when did you start filming with andre right i think like here and there like uh it was like 20 you know 2019 and then 2020 and then it went full freelance after that so about like maybe two and a half, two and a half years. Yeah. yeah and first, that first was, you did like the doc unique. thing about him and then you started working with him. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because even during film school, I did this like video for him. So it was like, it was like off and on throughout the years of film mm. school and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. So you already built a connection with Andre. You were training yeah. underneath him. You were making some videos some photos for Autos. Yeah. I mean, like. You got your blue belt under him? No, no. I was already blue belt. Um, but yeah, I mean, I pretty much started Autos. Like I was like just graduated high school. So it was kind of like, kind of living life throughout life in, at the gym and stuff like that. So I think it's just like those years, just growing closer to the people around me and stuff like He's that. He's really watched you grow up. Yeah. I mean, right after high school, it was just like, boom. Now you're married. Now you're married. Well, yeah. I mean. We we hung out with Andre at, at the table at your wedding. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Saying so that like, video yeah, yeah. of this, uh, the, 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 trying to pretend to drink the fish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's a funny dude. Okay, oh, yeah. so so then we met you. We're like, this guy's amazing. Let's work together. And then we had the idea to film a documentary about this fight. 
And then and you were you were there when we pitched the idea to him. Yeah, it was all three of us. Yeah, all three of us. Right. Well, it, it seemed like a very natural team because you had so much experience and uh, knowledge of the jujitsu world, a uh, close relationship with Andre himself. You right. had a better literally, relationship with him than we did. Literally, you, know? you had filmed the exact type of scenes mm -hmm. that we were going to be filming with him all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, now in retrospect, I'm like, yeah, like filming him have breakfast and yeah. hang out with his family. And then you started training at Autos as well. Right. So then I, I started to really understand jujitsu more. Right. And um, actually truly enjoy it. And then we met up and we're like, okay, like, let's make this film. This is crazy. Like, let's, let's put something together. And Andre's a businessman. And so we're like, yeah, like, we need to, like, have something tangible. And I'm like, there's no way other people him. are not pitching this to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's how I felt. So I was like, as soon as they announced the fight, I was like, we got to strike while the iron's hot. Yeah. Because someone else is going to try to move on this, too. Yeah. So we made, like, a little Canva deck. And yeah. uh, we we put we You had just done that video with Kainan. So you we put that as an example. We right. put one of our stuff that we did for the athlete stories together because we did that. Right. And, and then, we explain how how you got into filming jujitsu. Therefore, that's why you right. started training jujitsu. We explain how we started to work together and we're like, you know, this is this is the opportunity. And we put it all together. We're like, we have no idea where this is gonna end up. Like we don't we don't know, but we're willing and, and hoping that you're okay to let us film this documentary about this fight and follow you. And it was really great. I'll I mean, never we, forget his response after right. we pitched it to him. And we just kind of like flew through that thing, you know. And yeah, it, was it was pretty fast. It was, it was like and we're, yeah. I knew we were like, let's not try to waste his time type of yeah. vibe. And then when we got to the end of it, he's like, I know in my heart that this is right. <laughs> and I was like, poetic. Yeah. I was like, just, wow, what a response. And like, honestly, let's go. <laughs> that was the beginning of like, I've had a few times where I felt about stories like, wow, this is. Like, this is a great story I'm capturing. It's only really been like twice, I feel like, that I've had that feeling. And like, I've had it happen so many times with this Andre documentary because yeah. it was like that moment. Also, like, how connected he is with his faith. Yeah. Like, I was like very, like, you know, uh, not atheist, like uh, agnostic, mm -hmm. you know, and I still would not necessarily say I've converted my religion, but like, being open-minded to yeah, hearing yeah. how he views religion and like how passionate he is for it and like his logic behind why he believes in it and just like how it helps him be a, a better person. Like I've had so many moments from like, it just feels like spiritual yeah. with him. Mm -hmm, uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. So then he said yes. Yeah. And then we started, fil I think we began filming. So the bulk of our production started in January. We did a couple of like sporadic things we like filmed in his yeah, like once in May his home workout and then, and then that whole summer we filmed and we filmed the fight um in September of 2022. Yeah, basically summer 22 was like mad filming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was where the bulk of production was. Interviews, everything. So yeah, we had tons of production days and I want to I want to tap into kind of like our dynamic and how we work as a team cuz I think it's it's very special. So Matt, do you want to talk about like your directing style and kind of how Luis you support that and how how you guys collaborate because I think like you're you both are able to kind of communicate and work through challenges together and just like it's it's almost like you guys don't have to communicate that much from my perspective mm -hmm. it's like you guys have your powwows but then like a lot of times in verite filmmaking you you have to make yeah, choices yeah. right and yeah. it's not like Matt's gonna be whispering in your ear the whole time yeah, yeah. so like how do you feel like you started that relationship or just talk about talk about the dynamic yo it was kind of like the perfect timing for us to try to do something like this because i had done a few um films where i like flew out to another state filmed everything by myself mm -hmm. ran every the audio and everything like and got it was like a really intimate experience and i like lived with my subjects you know each for like a, a week at a time and i was like Coming back from those, I felt like those were super powerful stories and like such a an incredible intimate experience. But I did a lot of the verite filming. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I learned a ton about like when those magical moments were happening were like when they were forgetting that I was there. But that was because there was only one of me. That that was like an interesting realization. But then so I knew that 
I also had filmed with some people where I was doing verite and they're like hovering over my shoulder. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't like that. Yeah. So I'm like, definitely not going to do that to Luis. And like, we figured out a way to get like monitors even on our phones yeah. with the red, with the red, uh, programming stuff. But I don't really care to micromanage your framing because I have pretty good trust that you're going to do something interesting. That's your style. Cause I also think I have a slightly different, um, instinct when I'm filming compared to when you're filming. So like, I like, I want it to be your voice coming out of the camera not my voice, but I want to just try to, you know, we meet in the middle on maybe like certain things of like where we are in the third, maybe in the interview, like, or something small like that, you know, but like almost all the time, I pretty much just had faith that like, maybe I watched a few first times on monitors, but then I was like, it's just like a waste of my, my time. I'd rather like be interacting with the character or like building a relationship with someone on set or just letting you do your thing or helping camera operate if we need a second camera. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So I think I just had a lot of faith cause I just knew Luis was good. And like, that's how the whole relationship started was like, Oh, I know he's like such a dedicated cinematographer. Like I don't want to micromanage someone's cinematography. Yeah. I think originally it was like, you know, I was used to like the director kind of being like, very strategic in how you approached it and i think it, it was like a learning curve in terms of how we had to grow i didn't also really understand how to direct very well honestly yeah, yeah, yeah. with someone when we started together i think i grew a lot during the process and i didn't really understand my directing style yeah but i've learned that basically i become my character yeah, yeah. and like i like to just engage with whatever they do like to the nth degree to to a you know some manner yeah and so like I got to do jujitsu. I got to think like a champion. I yeah. got to train hard. I got to weight lift hard. Like watch my diet, like mm -hmm. think like a champion. Yeah. You know? So it's like, that's where I think I get the most out of like thinking about the story. Yeah. My main thing is, you know, I love to get to know the director for me in this process. When we, when I was getting to know him, I was like, I was just, I was just learning his eye in a way. I was like, okay. Like I was learning just how he thought about scenes, how he viewed scenes, how he viewed characters, how he viewed, he loves b-roll you know he loves uh insert shots and like all this stuff i feel like a dp could come in and be like all right what do you want and then you could contribute but it could be very just like i said before transactional where it's like all right i'm gonna get the shot but i think in a way it's like dp director relationship is very organic and so every director is different in so many ways and so for me in a way i had to kind of like come in with a clean slate and be like okay how does he work not how i work how does like matt work and so the more I started just kind of like seeing his style and then seeing his visual language, then I was like, oh, okay, that's what he likes. You know, for me, I, I'm just a brush and I'm trying to be his tool. The more we talked, the more we talked about scenes, the more we talked about just documentaries he likes, then I was like, oh, okay, like this is what he likes. So I guess in a way, <clears throat> the more we started learning, the more it validated what I was thinking about how he enjoyed to shoot certain scenes and what he liked lighting style uh angles thirds you know what i'm saying like certain things i was like okay he likes that a lot so i guess instinctually i just became started just to adapt and you know with him he started to create just like a really like just safe environment where he wanted my uh, uh perspective of a certain scene so then it was like okay like cool that's our relationship where it's like you know in theory i already know what he wants but it's like he, I know he values my opinion on certain scenes too. So I'm like, cool, like, let's just collab. Let's talk. Okay, cool. So I think this scene should be like this. What do you think? And he's like, you know, actually, I want to shoot like this. And I'm like, all right, cool, cool. Maybe I might pitch, like, maybe, like, just hear things here and there. But it's just like, it just has to be organic. It can't be so structured of, like, let's see your narrative, you know? Well, yeah, and I think you have to be flexible, especially because this is our first feature and also a lot of, like, the first time that we're, producing something of the size that you're directing in a sense like you you did so much like one man banding like I think it was a really good like flexible environment like we all like I think we all got along as friends and like that allowed us to like, support each other through that you know and just be understanding and flexible and adaptable and just be like okay like cool like just like very flowy and not like you know you're, you're the director you're going to tell me exactly what to do you're the cinematographer like I feel like we were very fluid. Yeah. Know? No, yeah. And there's just trust. Yeah. There's just trust in every part of the process. It's easy to adapt to that. You know what I mean? If there wasn't trust, then I'm like, oh, like, you know, you, you're you stepping on, like, uh, broken glass. You're kind of like, oh, should I, should I say this? Should I say? But, yeah. Well, I think, yeah, we, we created, like, a like a safe space, right? I feel like we all, like, got to know each other. 
and like we not only on set were you starting to like understand what i liked visually but like we talked about like life a lot yeah, and yeah, yeah. you know this story is like a huge life lesson and like it was crazy what was happening so we were all just like i can't believe this is happening like you know what i mean like so you're just like experiencing this historical type of thing together and we got to really understand each other as like people and like that that led to a lot of respect yeah on set and i think everyone was just game respected game but like i respected the way you look at life you know and your morals and i think that was like a big part like if i if i ever just like describe you to an absolute like there's a quick interaction i would just be like he's a good christian boy <laughs> christian boy. good christian boy but it's you know? true because yeah. our values i feel like do align and that's what allows us to be successful as a team because you feel safe right yeah no for sure think thinking about um the director dp relationship what kind of advice do you have for entering that relationship like what are some questions or practices that you think are important like when you start working with a new director. Yeah, I mean, I, I think exactly what Matt was saying is you first want to know who they are as a person, know their values, who they are, hang out with them. It's like, if you can't break bread with each other, that shouldn't be a relationship you want to stay. Cause you're so much in the trenches of like day-to-day -day production, the ups and the downs of production. Well, how can you share your opinion with someone that you're like, got this weird resentment towards no exactly you like, can't yeah you can't so it's just like if you can't live life with them then i don't know if you should choose that that project even if it's gonna pay you a bunch you're just gonna go it's just gonna you're gonna you're not gonna feel good you're not gonna feel free like would you want to go on a like 50 day road trip no exactly with this, with this person no exactly like if you can't do that i'd go on a road trip i was with gonna you. say I'd let's go do it trip. yeah let's do it <laughs> <laughs> no exactly like if you can't do that then don't enter the relationship doesn't matter how much you get paid. But yeah, I think I think it's just, just getting to know the person as a human and to kind of be like, all right, like, how you doing? Like, what's your story? I know it's a good project when the director is crazy passionate about the story. You know what I mean? Like when you guys pitched it to me, I was like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> Cause you guys are so in it. I was just like, I saw you guys a commitment and I was like, cause at first I was kind of like 50, 50 if the project was gonna happen. Cause you know, I feel like sometimes Andre can get excited about a project. But then it's like, if the support's not there, then, you know, then it can't follow through. But then when I got, when I saw your guys' uh, commitment, I was like, oh, shoot, like, they're doing it. You know what I mean? And I was like, all right, if they're all in, I'm all in. You know what I mean? But I think it's like, I wouldn't have had that security if you guys were like, oh, we'll see what happens. You know, then I'm like, ah, nah, nah, yeah, I, would I would have had distanced myself. You know, my main thing is, is whoever is leading me has to be passionate about what's going on, you know? Because if, if there's a director that's dependent on my passion to make the story happen, then I'm like, whoa. Like, you know what I mean? Like, no, you're the one directing. So I think it's just like they have to have the passion for why they're telling the story. Uh, just the passion of life. And then just be like, yeah, just can you just, do you like them as a person? <laughs> I think it's like if those things work, it, it's going to be a beautiful relationship. Well, and in documentary too, it's like, the character can feel whatever your relationship is too, right? And I feel like, with this Andre documentary, it's so special because Andre will joke around with you. He'll joke around around with you. He he feels comfortable yeah. with both of you guys. And there were times where maybe you weren't available. Matt stepped in to like mm -hmm. be the cinematographer, and it was that same energy was still like felt. Yeah, you know. And I think like if in a hypothetical situation of like if you guys weren't doing well, mm -hmm. then like someone would notice, oh, you know yeah, what I mean? Definitely. And it would change the energy. Yeah. Right, and like you were saying about Andre though, I feel like he he's just someone who, as we've been, I've been observing his life now for like two years and I'm like, I'm so impressed by him and he will immediately feel if somebody is not invested. Almost definitely. Because he is doing it way more than other people are. And if you're not meeting his 70% of energy, like he just probably doesn't want to participate. No, it was definitely, yeah. Come yeah. I mean, it's like- You need to be crazy passionate to, like to vibe almost yeah, together. Yeah. You know? I mean, you have, to, you have to match his energy. That's the most important part with documentary work is like, these are real human beings, right? right? It's not it's not like an actor that you hire from SAG and be like, all right, here's a script, do it or whatever. It's right, like, and you have a 12 hour day today. Yeah, you have a 12 hour day. It's like, it's like, no, no, like they have lives, they're human, families, all this stuff. And it's like, it's only fair for us to give our thousand percent for them to just allow us to tell that story, you know? Because mm -hmm. it's like, man, like, that's their story you know that's like very sacred very important for them and so you know that people run a risk of like 
say yes to someone about t- them telling a story and then they just ruin it and they're like wow you just completely didn't represent who i am as a person right so yeah. it's a serious job it, it, in a way it, it, it's honestly a very serious job yes yeah, it's, it's it's like you know it's interesting because it's like you know i feel like people are like oh you, oh, you do film okay so you do like just little videos and it's like but i think if you actually like think about it it's like man storytelling has been here for since the beginning of age like human human beings and it's like there's a reason why stories are so important because they convey messages they convey people's lives and allow just to be able to translate just life through a book a painting a, a movie a documentary whatever it is is it's something this is part of the human experience so mm-hmm. it's like it's important and it's important so it's like that's why we're crazy because yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's like crazy. it's crazy we're storytelling crazy. though like makes makes the, everything happen at every single level yeah. in every single industry in every single different yeah. type of communication because like that is how you give context to things that's how you convince people that's to buy how it things moves you right like going back to yeah. your story like you felt that in that movie and it changed your life yeah so i want to go into detail about when we filmed at adcc mm-hmm because that was definitely a very emotional moment. And I think we all grew as people during that. And I think uh, there's definitely some learning experiences that we had during this from everybody's perspective. So a little bit of background, this was the fight. This was the fight that we were, you know, progressing toward. The The announcement, the announcement that led to us making the film in the first place. Right. Was for this fight. And so ADCC is basically the Olympics of jujitsu and Andre was fighting Gordon Ryan happens only every other year mm-hmm. we road trip to Vegas mm-hmm. picked up Luis from the airport we picked up Luis from the airport Las he got Vegas to fly airport. which was awesome yeah, our blessings. car was <laughs> our car was stacked honestly we had Ooh, yeah we had to reinvest into another roof bag just right. to make sure we could get back with all your stuff yeah that was a good bag because we bag. we we still have no funding up until this point. It's been completely self investment from our company, which we got um, from some advice from people. Though that's the smartest thing to do because right, then I mean, you retain we all of the, right. the ownership rights and copyrights, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. you can do whatever you want with it. Um, then. And so we were always trying to save costs. We also uh, had Duncan fly out. He came a couple of days later yeah. for the actual fight. Yeah, as Duncan's well. another talented DB, mm-hmm. DP that uh, came out of Chapman as well. Mm-hmm. And our other producer Anna who is wonderful and helped yeah. helped a lot throughout the whole she, process. Yeah. She's an incredible Brazilian documentary filmmaker that's very focused on like jujitsu stories. Yes. So Anna's part of our team as well. We got our media passes, which was... Uh, it was hectic. Cause the, hectic. The thing that's interesting um, about Andre and his wife, Angelica, who, by the way, is like the business uh, driver of what's going on. She is She's doing so much in an, in an incredible way. But anyway, so she was the one that was connecting us directly so like, you know, Andre is like a celebrity basically, but he doesn't have an agent, right? He doesn't have someone who represents him or like an agency. So it's very fascinating to be like very indirect communication, which made it smoother and faster for us, which is helpful. But it's almost like controversial that like we have to rely on our characters in a sense to connect us. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, it so, makes it tough. It makes but, it tough. But, but so, yeah, it took a while to get the media passes because we didn't want to over push Angelica. Right. And then she was also trying to do it for all of Autos because they're getting different media passes for all their athletes and their wives and all sorts of stuff. So we finished filming the fight. The fight happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, Andre lost. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was a pretty emotional experience because Andre is such a decorated champion and has won so many fights in such dominant fashions that it was hard as a fan of Andre in a, you know, to watch him lose well, that way. Well, and you way. want your character, in a sense, to win, right? You of want, course. You're like, wow, we want you to win, but then... Of course, as a human, I want him to win. Right. But you can't control the narrative and whatever happens, happens. So that drive home was... Crazy, hella fun. We all cried. <laughs> yeah. yeah, oh yeah. We all oh, cried. Yeah. We were just like, Dude. well, we're just so. I feel like as documentary filmmakers, you are so, you have to be so invested in what you're working on that when your characters are emotional or like it's just your your own emotional uh, bubble will burst at some point, whether it's on set or when you get home or whatever. And it like, should, it, right? It should because you're a human too, right? And you're feeling those emotions. But it's intense sometimes. Yeah. Right. And that's why it's important. Are you going to invest into that story? Because <laughs> you put everything into it. Because it's like, it takes like 
everything in you to tell that story. So it's like, is that story worth the nine months? You know, is it worth like this long of an investment financially, emotionally, spiritually, all this way? That's why even for me as a storyteller, I think just being more intentional and like, all right, like, is this really a story that's really worth everything? You know what I mean? Because it's like, because when I say yes, I'm giving you my all, you know, man. nine days, study, research, blah, 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 whatever it is. It's like, so it's like, is that really worth, you know, being gone from my wife or being gone from my family or to say no to certain things because it requires this, you know, um, that's why, you know, f filmmaking in general is just, it's very demanding, very interesting career because it's like, you know, you create these beautiful stories, beautiful imagery, all that stuff, but it's like to see how much energy that goes into that. It's, it's like, a lot. It's, it's a, a lot. It's a lot. And we appreciate all the energy that you put no, into of course. this. I yeah. mean, it's crazy when I think, I mean, we're still on this journey together, yeah. but it's a lot and it's the dedication that you have for the craft too and just like being all in with us about it because it's a leap of faith right like it's totally a leap of faith doing something that is an original idea that you know we just came up with right no not but that's what i love about what we're doing in a sense and like why it resonated with us as a crew or like documentary compared to narrative type of filmmaking you know where there's all sorts of so many people on set that have to be a part of it to make it happen but it's almost like the less people, the better in a dark yeah, world. Yeah, and yeah. like you need a few, you definitely need a, like it. We've discovered you definitely need your key crew. You know, you're going to need support. You're going to need some different people with different skill sets with different backgrounds. But at the end of the day, you don't really need, you're definitely not going to need more than 10. Yeah. You know, that would be yeah, the total yeah, max. Yeah, you don't need more than 10. You need, you need four or five or six maybe, you know, and like roll with that. Part of our core values as a company is like, you know, making big impacts and all sorts of responsibilities and accountabilities. But you got to have fun while you're doing it and yeah. love your family and have good family vibes while yeah. it's happening. Yeah. So family vibes. it's just like it resonates. And then that's what we want to make a movie about the real person, yeah. make a movie about them. And then hopefully like other people get to feel that inspiration that like everyone that's around Andre feels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we were to synthesize, like what are some things that we learned from this experience? How would we do it differently? I think and we can kind of go around and, and talk about it. Fair. So I think number one, like really understanding that like there is potentially going to be a conflict of someone not liking you filming there, whether or not they're right being prepared for that moment. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we, in my defense, I was a novice director, so I just didn't prepare us well enough to have all of the plan A, plan B, mm -hmm. and knowing exactly your positions at exactly what times. And I also think like there was some disorganization from the event, but like, I can't put that on, on the event. I was just lack of experience, number one. And I think now I would know how to try to film something like that. Right, like but, having a diagram. Right, a diagram like, where people's positions are. Just understanding how you can film in a, in a stadium yeah. and an arena and yeah. like what the different things that are naturally like built for. Having a plan, but then telling it to the person that's like our media person or whatever. So like having the diagram, I think is super important. Like this is plan or having like four different plans. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like this is ideal situation if we're able to do everything that we want. Right. Like if no one has any rules about and us. And I will literally have a plan if you get, if they're this, trying to kick us out, here's where to hide and film from. Yeah. This is yeah. plan A, this is plan B, or like just planning for what those restrictions are. Yeah. But, um, and really like going over that as a team. I think that probably like in pre-production, I mean, always, you know, we're inexperienced, so we didn't know this before, but I think that for sure, anything from your end. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think in general, though, it's like, yeah, this uh, walkie talkies are dope. Yeah, oh my God. that's a huge tip. I was like, bro, tip. the fact that we had walkie-talkies was so, so helpful. Yeah, if you're filming a large live event, you need walkie-talkies. Yeah, and honestly- Because that's how you yeah. can communicate with your crew. Right. I mean, you were backstage sometimes. I was somewhere else. You were there. It's like, you, you're you not going to be calling each other. You're not going to have yeah, time texting, to, you know, right, to yeah, do that. Right. So yeah. I think that was a huge learning uh, yeah. experience of like right. that was headsets so and walkies worth it. is so, so helpful, fun. so worth yeah. it. And then and then like I liked how we like designated each person from someone. Mm. So I was exclusively with Andre, and then like the warm up room, and then you know you did you had other positions. Like all this stuff is very just like his stadium is very overwhelming because like okay, am I going to film that or am I going to film that? Right. But in general, right. Well, that's why they have like yeah. eighteen camera operators that's just like positioned yeah. everywhere, right? I mean, like the key thing was like initially in the beginning, we just 
a lot of like crowd reactions, a lot of just like establishing shots and all that stuff. But once we felt good about all those types of shots, they were like, all right, cool. Like stick with Andre, stick with him, stick with him and just stay dedicated to that. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like, you know, what if I was filming Andre, but I was like, oh wait, someone's fighting right now. Let me go film that and got distracted. Yeah. So I think just having a very focused team on like exactly what they're going to do, stay dedicated to that. And then, yeah, I mean, just communication, just a, that's, that's the main thing. Okay, to, to end this conversation, let's let's all go around and think about if we were to start giving advice to maybe a new filmmaker that's thinking about embarking on their first feature. <laughs> oh. You know, from your perspective, as a producer, as a director, as a cinematographer. I think it's actually like, don't just plan on being like, I'm going to do my first feature. Yeah. Like we didn't think, oh, I'm going to make a feature. Yeah. And then I like found Andre. It was like, I found Andre organically through the process of my life in filmmaking. And then we realized this is a feature mm. because there's just so much depth to the story and there's so much time to be following in Verite and Andre is so compelling on camera that like, why would I waste so much of this awesome raw footage of this man's life at a historical point in time, yeah. not just for his career, but also for jujitsu as a whole. So it's like, the more you show, the better, I think, in that sense. So I don't think, you don't find your first feature, your first feature finds you. Mm. Wow. Drop some null null. Not null. Wow. <laughs> no, it's true. Anything that becomes great is not intentionally designed to be like, oh, we're going to get awards. Let's make this story because we can get awards. It's like, no, this is an amazing, beautiful story. Let's just, just do it. With Andre film, it's like, the heart behind it wasn't, let's get awards, let's, you know, this is just like, hey, this is this is the most pivotal time of his career, once in a lifetime. Like you said, you kept saying, this is once in a lifetime. Like this is literally the last fight. Yeah. He's the peak of his career, peak of his career, mm -hmm. just whatever, whatever. It'll never happen again. It'll never happen again. And it's like, we didn't go about it like, oh man, like we're gonna make a lot of money or we're gonna get this, this. It was just like, the heart behind it was pure. And that's how I knew it was like, this is what something I want to invest in because it was like, your guys' heart was pure, mine was pure, so it was like, let's just get it, so. What kind of tips do you have for a cinematographer starting out on their first feature or their first documentary? Yeah, just be ready to commit, because it's very like, it's it's like a stamina. It's like filmmaking, filmmaking is a stamina. So I think just understand what you're getting yourself into. It's have like, the endurance. Endurance, this is endurance, because it's like, it's a lot, you know, and you can be like, oh. But I think if you're committed, you know what's going to happen. Just, you know, take it day by day, you know, make sure you don't burn out, communicate with your team, all that stuff. But yeah, just commitment. I feel like that's the biggest one. Yeah, I feel like I've noticed you have obviously such a tight relationship with Andre, you know, and the more and more we've been like observing other camera operators and DPs and our own reflecting on our relationship with our characters, like the relationship with the cinematographer and the character actually is like super important. And I feel like it's super easy to take like the narrative approach and be like, well, we just need the sickest DP that does the dopest commercial work that does this thing. But it's like, no, you need someone who really is like gonna be, be able to match emotionally like with the director and the character. And the character, yeah. yeah. And so it's like, wow, the level of intimacy you can achieve by actually having relationships like with the camera operator and the, and the yeah. person that's being filmed. That's like where the magic yeah. will come or they'll forget or they'll just be totally themselves or you're gonna you're gonna end up capturing that real sauce. Oh yeah. Because you're like homies, like really friends. No, exactly. And I guess it's like a short little thing based off that. I work with the director on this one thing. Long story short, uh yeah, we filmed this military guy and it was just cool. Like the director at the end of it was like, Hey, like actually I'm really grateful that I chose you because you not only were just there to work, but you actually was interacting with the the person. Like these, the guy was just so easy to like. I was I kept hugging him. Yeah. We, kept, we kept just joking around. Like this guy was so funny. But it was just like, I guess like as a DP, is like just know that you're more than just an asset. It, like you're human. So it was like, especially in doc world, these are real people. So if you're just quiet sitting in the corner and just kind of be like, all right, tell me what to do, you know? It's right. like, you're going to have to interact with all types of people. What's going to encourage them? Like, if you're sitting there quiet, that's going to encourage them to sit there and be quiet. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, yeah, just the more you're 
human <laughs> the more you're just like a good person yeah you're less of like a raccoon or something yeah. and like more like a human <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, no, yeah we, we don't want like we, we don't like raccoons man <laughs> no but yeah i think it's just but that's what i'm saying it's all about leadership so matt led it that way so then that allowed me to be safe and do that if he would have told me like hey don't say nothing I'm like, whoa, what is going on? Mm -hmm. But by L Matt's leadership, I was like, oh, I can, yeah, listen, this is all, it's very organic. Cool, let's make it happen. So at the end of the day, right, that's why it's important. If you're about to do a feature, are you ready to commit that long with the person who's leading you? Yeah. What about you? What's the advice from producing Producing. your first feature? And also, you know, obviously you're my wife, so you didn't really have a say in the matter of... Uh, <laughs> producing some it. of these things that I direct. <laughs> Which I'm very grateful for, obviously. So um, <laughs> thank you. Um, but yeah, being being a part of a feature as a producer, what would be like a key takeaways for someone who's trying to embark on producing documentary that's feature length? Yeah, I was reflecting on this. It's hard because I feel like I'm still learning so much right now in it. So I still feel like I can only maybe give some tips about like pre-development and like production because I feel like I, there's a huge learning curve that I'm currently on about post and distribution. So I can't really speak to that. But honestly, field notes is huge. You know, during a long production, you have so many days of production and you're so in the sauce and you think of maybe good ideas or, oh, wow, that was an amazing soundbite the day of. Three days later, you are not going to remember or, that. Or four weeks later, or four a, weeks um, later, two months or later when they're editing later, or something. You are not going to remember. So something that I am now super diligent about is for every production that we do that's longer than like a one or two day shoot, I have field notes. So I'll, you know, put the date up top. I will say whoever worked that day. I'll say, you know, cam A was this, cam B was this. And to me, honestly, it doesn't have to be too complicated. I think we can keep it super simple, but basically like what was the coverage that you got? What was the coverage that you got? Were there any like weird mishaps? Like did the audio cut out or did we forget room tone? Or it's almost like I'm, my job as a producer is to have those notes and think of it then so that it comes in handy later yeah. right so i think field notes for sure is something definitely to do yeah. and you can keep it simple you don't have to overcomplicate it you don't need to go crazy with what frame rate what this what this what like no what did you capture what did you like what what stood out to you because then that will be super handy later on in the editing room right you just got to think like an editor yeah you have to when think you're like on an set. editor and this is something i guess like i'm i'm learning now and even in this experience like even if you don't know what's going to happen in the end, you don't know where it's going to end up or, you know, you don't know if you're ever going to make money. This is something I learned that I probably could have even done better for this one is like just have simple agreements in place with your your crew members. And it could just be like this is whatever your understanding is at that moment. At least you have a written agreement and it's set upon about like what your roles and responsibilities are and the idea is like when you come into money, what happens to it? Mm. And this is something that I'm figuring out currently. So, uh, you I was, know, I was gonna say uh, we got some documents we need to. Yeah, look like at. we have some documents <laughs> that we need to fill out. But that's that's a huge learning experience. That, and I think I'm blessed that it was with this situation with you, Louise, that like you're our friend, and that like we like we still have time to like talk about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But like I've seen it blow up in other yeah, manners yeah, where yeah. like it can get very complicated because you get put messy. so much you put so much into it, you know what I mean? And and right. so we all we all start with one intention in mind, but sometimes when money is involved and other things, like it can get quite complicated. Yeah. And so like as much as possible like trying to hedge that and you don't have to be an expert. You can be honest and be like I don't know what's going to happen, but you can at least like have that conversation ahead of time before it happens. Think of your film like a business. I'd say that's the, the concise way to put it, right? Yeah. That's where it's like, honestly, I'd say more often than not, the first feature people do are with your friends. Mm -hmm. And that is that is the risk that you're taking. And so it's like, we're, all, we're not lucky we're friends. We're lucky we're not stupid friends. <laughs> if we were like, you know, had not as keyed in align morals like and not everyone has like the perfect lineup of things i think we're really lucky in the situation we have and right to your point just like it's like definitely put that in place especially 
when you're working with your friends because you don't want it to blow up and then like ruins a friendship that was like this next level of intimacy you can achieve together but now that's lost because of money that's stupid you know so it's just like yeah do it from the beginning because it's worth it yeah you gotta love it don't do it for the money it'll come but i think as a tp as just like a filmmaker in general if you're trying to decide if this is something you want to do just know it's messy <laughs> it's messy uh, it's emotional but it's amazing at the same time you you build these friendships that, you know throughout the way and it's like of course every everyone's journey is different so i think as my favorite cinematographer says it's like it's not a competition like everyone's art is different from everyone else's so it's literally impossible to compare because like how i shoot something in a certain way is going to be different how he's going to sh shoot something or tell a story in a different way so it's like yeah just understand that like you got to love it got to find that community and um yeah just just enjoy the journey don't don't look at about don't look at oh i should be here at this time or this is what i want or no, just be like you know what like i'm in a good place good people telling good stories you know just enjoy that every step by making documentaries you get the opportunity to like see experience live out other people's mistakes and successes in life mm -hmm. and you don't have to make them yourself and you can kind of make the choice to use that as a lesson and then also like follow their example actually of what they've done for success and like in your the own more life. people you talk to right and yeah. you can apply that to your own life yeah. the more people you talk to the more of your own like goodness that you're you can create you know so like that's why i'm like dang if you're feeling burnt out man like keep keep making docs keep making following the interesting people in your life you know because mm -hmm. you're just going to keep being inspired and then bike following that curiosity like you introduce to some random person that yeah. then inspires you to do jujitsu or some random stuff or whatever you know and that's what that's what makes life really entertaining you're traveling into other people's worlds right and they let you in and you get to be in that world super and curious you learn something every time all right thank you for being here that's hey, a wrap great round table guys Woo! That's a wrap on today's episode. Thank you so much for listening and or watching. I hope you found this useful. If you did, give us a rating. This will really help us grow our audience and better serve you. Also, if you love talking docs, join our weekly Discord Wednesdays at 5 p.m. PST where we discuss a doc of the week and check in with each other. Talk soon.